Now, as I said earlier, you want to hand test everything, ideally bar by bar. And you know, take look at a bar and then decide what you want to do, and then go one bar forward and decide what you want to do. Only thing I'd warn you about in doing that is if you're using like a moving average or something. Years ago, a hedge fund contacted me, or soon to be hedge fund, and uh, this guy thought he had the holy grail. And we, it's kind of a long story, but long story endless. At one point in time, one of his signals was based on, I know I've said this before, was based on a moving average turning up. And when I was doing the hand testing, just like this on the screen, I actually wore out several mice by clicking. Anyway, I noticed that the turn up happened, but the turn up was using the next day's data, which was just off the screen. And in the printouts, it was the same thing. You could look at the printouts and see, okay, here's your buy signal playing this day. But that was using tomorrow's day data. If I had tomorrow's data, you'd never see my fat ass again, believe me. I love you guys, but. <laughs> now, empirical research is the best research. How did I discover a fantastic way to trade IPOs? Well, I looked at a lot of IPOs and I said, aha, a lot of these things just go straight down and never go up. And then I dug a little further and said, a lot of them make the high in the first day. And it's something that I've done. A thousand times and like i said a second ago i look at a couple thousand stocks every day and by the way you want to as i've said before and one of you guys actually gave me the idea but he was talking about counterfeit currency detectives well counterfeit currency detectives they don't go out and, and study uh, i get 100 trillion right here uh they, they don't go out and study a bunch of monopoly money they they look at a real dollar bill and they look for the the markers and the thread and the feel. And there's all kinds of things to, to prevent counterfeiting. And as you get better and better and better at looking at the genuine article, the fakes will stick out like a sore thumb. So start looking at stocks that move, that take off and, and realize not every move is gonna have a pattern, but start looking at stocks that make some really long-term nice moves and see what characteristics they have. So one of the things he was asking is, what is your process? Well, my process is to study and study and study and study and study markets, like the TFM 10% system. I'm like, okay, well, geez, I need a market timing system that's going to get me out of the way when things start to go sour. Okay, when things start to go sour. How do I define when things start to go sour? Aha, 10%. Well, let's take a look at 10% moves going back to the 1900s, okay? And just in general just looking at markets every day i watch the market all day long i probably should not be doing that although i stopped doing it yesterday to go get a freaking haircut <laughs> and when i walked in the office the futures had jumped about 30 points while i was gone so i'm like that's great that's another story altogether but notice the nuances notice the behavior learn how to read the tape again study the general genuine article and keep in mind is it's something i've said before that years and years and years of mechanical system programming has actually made me a discretionary trader and to learn how to to pick stocks and like i said early on i was helping somebody with their stock picking i was doing the programming i thought my job was to do the program run the scans and give them the, the results well this gentleman expected a lot more from me he expected me to go through those stocks and only give him the best stocks from the list so in order to keep that gig, I had to learn how to read charts. I, up until then, I was doing a lot of mechanical testing. And then it, all of this made me realize that it's an art, not a science, but it can be learned. And as I said earlier, a lot of it is caught, not taught, but it can be learned. So that's what made me discretionary trading. Now, he was asking, what are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for an edge, not a grail. The holy grail doesn't exist. I'm fairly confident I would have found it based on all the research I've done in the past in all the grail hunting. I'm also a member of the AAPTA, and I'm sure one of those guys or gals in that organization would have found it if there was one. Somebody like McMillan or Greg Morris. Over time, through a shit ton of empirical research, that's looking at a lot of charts, I have noticed things like Landry light, like the bow ties, okay? And I'm not 
looking per se, like every time I look at a chart, like, oh, I want to find something here. I want to learn something. It just sort of comes to me, right? From looking at all these charts. As I've said 10,000 times when I'm speaking in person, I ask the audience, okay, anybody here a musician? And then, of course, by the laws of averages, somebody raises their hands. And I'm like, okay, how did you get good? And they look at me like I pooed my pants. It's like, I practice, dumbass implied. Well, you want to get look at you want to get better at reading charts look at a lot of charts every day now you need something that's going to be easy to recognize and follow and and bow ties for instance pretty damn easy to follow pretty damn easy to recognize and in many years ago 20 years ago that became one of my most popular patterns really quickly and then Lately, I've been working with Landry Light more and more and more and more, and that seems to be gaining a little traction with a lot of people because, aha, that makes sense. I could see it. If you can't see it, underneath it, there's an illustrator, not an indicator, an illustrator illustrating the number of bars of Landry Light, and that's in uh, Metastock has it in their, pa in their package. ACP, which is Stock Charts package, now has it in my plugin, which is free. I keep saying for now but it's uh, free for now. <laughs> How do you collect data? I've only seen your data file on the TFM 10% system. Do you have other files you could share that show what data you use for your analysis? Well, I no longer program. In fact, at this present time, I don't have any, any programs where I could get in and do some hardcore programming. I, I do take that back. I do some meta stock programming here and there, but I don't do a lot of system analysis and system testing there other than by hand if I were to develop something there. So everything now is done by hand. Uh, I often think, well, I need to get back into TradeStation or Easy Language or whatever. I used to program in that. But I know me. If I start going down that rabbit hole, I'm going to spend hours and hours programming and we'll go back to the old the old day from many, many years ago doing all, doing all that system testing. And I think that you just keep it simple and, and, and don't try to do all these fancy things and then test things by hand because there's going to be times where you don't have a mechanical system but it looks pretty good a mechanical signal but it looks pretty good and you might want to be in the market there'll be other times where you have a mechanical system like the uh, a signal like a while back we had a, a tfm 10 percent buy and i overlooked it i put it in the spreadsheet to, to be on you know keep things honest right but i overlooked it and stayed out of the market because I didn't like the way the market had shot up and came back in. And the other thing that happened, as I've said a thousand times, but I like my moving averages big and thick. And I was thinking of jokes there, but I better not. But I like them big and thick. And the, the moving average was so thick, it was touching the bottom of the bar. So there, it, there, was, there was actually Landry light there, but the moving average was so thick, it was touching the bar, right? So I didn't see the Landry light, plus it closed poorly. It was down in a week hard. I'm like, well, that's obviously not a signal. And then I got an email from one of you guys that said, yes, it is. I'm like, ah, oh, you're right. Just like early in my career, again, as I kind of alluded to a second ago, I would show setups to this gentleman. And I'm like, well, here's your setup. He's like, that's not my setup. I'm like, yes, it is. And I know I need some new stories. But we go back and forth, and I'd walk him through it. And I'd walk him through the programming. And he goes, well, I don't like it. So... Now, I'm not a mechanical trader, but in more recent years, I have incorporated some mechanical trading into my longer term analysis. For instance, as I said a few minutes ago, I'm long the queues based on the TFM 10% system. And to my surprise, that's working out pretty good. It's, it's like it's beating almost everything else that I've been doing lately. Um, maybe not the SYM trade, which just began to take off a little bit. But other than that, it's doing pretty damn good. I forget. Uh, how many points are in there, 15 points or whatever so far. Now, when the market began to tank on this last sell-off earlier this year, I have some, as I've said before, I don't do a lot of long-term market timing and long-term positioning, okay? Maybe in my next life I will. But I don't also don't want to be trading my daughter's accounts like the rabbit's going for the cocaine. And uh, I know Larry Larry McMillan like trades different people in his family's accounts using all his stuff and all, but I think that's really cool. But I'm a little nervous to do that. Uh, I would much rather just keep it more simple 
and keep them like in a little bit longer term market timing type of stuff because they're younger and I want them to be in the market as much as possible, but obviously I want them to be out of the way when the market tanks. So I pulled them out of the market on the last TFM 10% sell signal and I put them back in on the last buy. So something simple like that, I'm gonna keep them in and out of the market. So I do a little bit of that and just for SGs to play along, I, I bought some Qs, not much, 100 shares. And again, I'm playing along. So I will do that type of thing. And I will pay attention, of course, to any type of signal, like I just said, bow ties and Landry light and all these other things, especially off of new highs and new lows. How do you analyze the data? Well, of course you need to ask yourself, in general, does the concept work, okay? And then again, could you actually follow it, okay? Now, if you go down the system programming, designing rabbit hole, you're gonna be faced with things like uh, maximum adverse excursion, and uh, maximum favorable excursion and so on and so forth. And that'll lead you to believe that, okay, so every time the system has a, let's say the system has a 20% loss, okay? And you notice that it never comes back once it goes in a hole about 4%, okay? So you put in that 4% rule, oh, I'm selling thing down 4%. Well. In the future, that 4% becomes like 4.5% or whatever. So you get knocked out of a bunch of good trades. You also look at it and say, okay, my maximum maximum favorable excursion is, let's say you make 20%. Seems like anytime you make 20%, that's the most you ever make on the system, it comes back in and stops you out. So you're like, aha, anytime I'm about 20%, I'm going to take it because it never makes more than 20%. Well, guess what? The next trade is going to go up 100 or 200, 300, 400 percent, and you're going to miss out. So I think all the statistics are worthless. And I mean, 75 percent of all people know that statistics are worthless. <laughs> so again, I'm not going to follow this 100 percent mechanically, but I will heed the warnings. And in select cases, yes, I will follow them mechanically. Uh, you know, the, the buy a B is something that's somewhat mechanical, but there's a lot of discretion involved. I mean, I probably could work hard to to give it all the rules. And one thing I was thinking about right before I went live was I did meet somebody once and uh, I was talking to him in person and he was actually working on something that could probably could maybe eliminate all the discretion and stuff that I'm talking about. That may be a little bit nervous. And I'd like to know how he's doing. I have to look him up. But it's like, I'm afraid that he'd start looking at my stuff again. And, you know, so you could, the point I'm trying to make there is you can put some rules, general rules into place that will make you a little bit more mechanical than than maybe you think you are. And that would be like a good example, again, coming back to the IPOs is like, okay, well, I had a $20 rule and then now they're, they seem to be, it seems to be some of the 20 to $30 uh, IPOs have taken off quite a bit over the last five or six years. So the $20 rule is kind of more of a guideline and now it's more like a $30 rule. And then there's volume requirements and I just kind of look at that by hand. I'm sure you could mechanize that, but I would caution you into not mechanizing things too much. Use a little common sense, get a little experience, look at a few charts and get the idea. 